going on, Ant Crew? My name is Andrew. Welcome back to a brand new exciting video. I hope you guys, I hope the Ant Crew are having a fantastic day. All right, so we're trying out something a little bit different today. Today, I got a whole bunch of new gear in the mail. And I know that a lot of you guys are interested in more than just editing. You're also interested in camera gear and the actual process of filming the videos and stuff like that. So I thought today we'd start off this video by just unboxing some new gear. But if you guys are only here for the tutorial, I totally understand. Just click the number that is displayed on the screen and you'll go right to the tutorial but like I said we got a lot of stuff to unbox so for all of you guys who stuck around thank you my dudes let's start unboxing some stuff I'm really excited but here's the deal I have a very very small portion of self-control so when I got this gear in the mail the first thing I had to do was open it. I couldn't wait to like set up the camera and the lights and everything like that to open it. Everything has already been unboxed and it's kind of lame. No, but seriously guys, the first thing that I got was a brand new lens, which is like the most exciting thing you can get. This is the main thing by far. This is my new lens, which is for vlogging. It's really light, easy to carry, and that's perfect for vlogging. The best thing about this is by far the autofocus and the inside stabilization. One thing I've had a lot of problem with vlogging in the past with the Sony a6500 is it's just really, really shaky. And it's just not fun to watch at all. So having this optical steady shot is just really helpful and just hopefully gonna make my footage a lot more smooth and easy to watch. Overall, stoked on this lens. I'm gonna be using it later on in this video so you guys will get a better feel of what it looks like. All right, moving on. Got a new tripod. Clearly, this has not been opened at all. And this is a Gorillapod. I'm going all Casey Neistat on you right now. Just watch me. This is the Joby Gorilla Pod 3K. It's not the biggest Joby Gorilla Pod. It is the second biggest. The biggest one is like made for 1DXs and stuff like that. And I don't need that. This is the one that's made for like mirrorless cameras and smaller DSLRs. Most of the gear that I got is really just for vlogging since I want to start doing that a little bit more on my channel. Maybe not vlog specifically, like just a video about my life. But I sort of just want to start incorporating more vlog style content into tutorials and camera gear videos and stuff like that. Uh, let me know what you think about that in the comments down below if it's a good idea or not either way I'm doing it not gonna lie so I'm stoked on this I've made a whole video about Joby Gorilla Pods in the past it was a long time ago but if you want to check it out I'll link it right there all right so next up wait where'd the case go oh there it is I see it <laughs> next off we have the microphone this is also my new mic for vlogging and I decided to go with the video micro from Rode so here's what it looks like it's got this fat dead cat on it but I decided to go with this because it's cheap for one thing and also it just sounds really good great sound quality especially when you can get the mic nice and close like this and it's just a nice size for the a6500 since it's a smaller camera it's nice to have a little bit of a smaller and more proportional microphone okay so the last thing that I got and sort of like the wild card, the sort of weird thing that I got is a new camera backpack. Let me go grab it. You guys are about to be like, um, Andrew, excuse me, what? All right, here it is. Here is the beast of the camera bag that I got. This is the Low Pro 450 backpack. I have mixed thoughts about this, not because of anything about this backpack in particular. Honestly, this backpack is incredible. It's like a rock solid hard shell. If you're a travel filmmaker and you're lugging around a lot of gear and you wanna keep that gear safe, this is the backpack to get. However, my setup right now is pretty small. I've got a Sony a6500, which is a tiny camera. I have a couple tripods. I have some audio equipment and stuff like that. But other than that, I don't have that much gear and the gear that I do have is pretty small. But this backpack right here is made for like multiple DSLRs, even like a 1DX. And it's just made for people who have massive lenses and a lot of gear. So I'm thinking about potentially returning it maybe. But on the other hand, I'm only planning on getting more gear. So it's kind of nice to know that when I get new gear, I'll be able to fit it into my backpack without having to worry about expanding. It's a great backpack. It's just a little bit overkill for the amount of gear that I have right now. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And now we're actually going to switch over to this new gear, to this new vlogging setup, and you guys can tell me what you think about it down in the comments below. All right, guys, here we are. This is it. This is the new vlogging setup. So right now we're at 18 millimeter. Is that not wide or what? It's just nice to know that I can vlog and get wide shots and everything like that. So yeah, that's about it. This is crazy. It's actually kind of funny because I'm like acting all like excited and stuff when actually I have no idea what it looks like. I so miss having to flip out screen from Canon. I wish I could see my beautiful sexy self, but I can't. No, but seriously guys, comment down below and let me know what you guys think about this footage, how it looks, and everything like that. Alright guys, so I'm downstairs on the computer now, and whoa, does this not look different or what? I got a wide angle lens, a 10 to 18 millimeter, so that's why this looks so different. Anyways guys, we're not here to talk about that. Today we're talking about how to do double exposures, and good news for you guys is it's really, really simple. So right now I'm inside of Adobe Premiere Pro, and I've got my timeline here that you guys saw at the beginning of 
of this video. And you could do this effect inside of Premiere Pro, but you guys know me. I always like to work in After Effects. It's just my program of choice. So I'm going to select these two clips, right click, and hit replace with After Effects Composition. Now let's load it up inside of After Effects. My adjustment layer with my color grading is gone, so that's where these clips look a little bit different. But I'm just going to show you guys how incredibly simple it is to do this effect. The first thing I'm going to do is take this first clip and drag it underneath the second shot. I'm going to use this clip for half of the exposure of the next shot. I'm going to go over to this next shot, go over to effects and presets. We're going to use an effect called key light. Now, Key Light 1.2 is After Effects' color keying effect. If you're doing any kind of work with green screens or blue screens or really any kind of color keying, not luminance keying, then you're going to use this effect. For those of you guys who are wondering, there's really only two types of keying, color keys and luma keys. Color keys are based on, yep, you guessed it, color and the color in the pixels, whereas luminance keys are based on how bright or how dark a pixel is. That's how it decides what to key out and what to leave in. So if you're trying to key out white or black, you use use a luminance key. If you try to key out anything else, you use a color key. Today we're doing something really easy. We're just trying to key out this green in the leaves. So we're going to use key light 1.2. Drag this down on top of the leaves clip and now you're going to go over to the effects controls panel and you're going to see a whole bunch of different controls. But today we're just going to mess around with this function called screen color and this drop down menu called screen matte. First thing we're going to do is go over to this eyedropper tool, select the eyedropper tool. And what this tool does is it allows you to pick a color inside of the frame. So right now I'm trying to key out this green so I'm just going to hover over it and select it and there you go guys now you can see that the clip underneath it is coming through it looks really solid and honestly you could totally go with it just like that but here's the thing about double exposures is that it's double exposures it's not just like a key you don't want it just to be perfect you want to see sort of the texture of the object that you're keying into so it keyed out a little bit too much here we want to sort of bring back in sort of some of the textures and the details of the leaves of the individual leaves so we're gonna go down to this screen mat drop down menu right here under clip black if we drag that up we get more and more key until we reveal the entire clip underneath it we don't want to do that we want to drag it all the way down we just want to leave that at zero but clip white if we drag that back you can see we start bringing in more texture of the leaves the farther we bring it down the more texture you can see. There you can see some of that texture in the leaves the little individual spines I don't want it to be that much I want it to be about probably right here. And there you have it guys, that is how to do this double exposure. Now real quick, I'm going to show you a quick and fun way to sort of transition into the double exposure. All you have to do is go down to the base clip, this clip right here, duplicate it. I'm going to select the top two clips, right click and hit pre-compose, move all attributes into new composition, hit OK. And now right here we're going to drag this clip on top, go over to luma key, drag that on top of the top clip, keyframe threshold, go a few seconds into the clip, and then just drag the threshold option way up. So now if we play through, you can see we've got this really nice luma fade off. And then for this last white bit to go away, we're going to hit T on our keyboard. That brings up our opacity function. Keyframe opacity at 100%. Move a few frames into the clip and then just bring that opacity all the way down. And that is about it, guys. I'm going to render it through in Premiere Pro so we can see it with the color correction and then we will watch our work. All right, everybody, and there you have it. That is how to do this double exposure effect inside of Adobe After Effects. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. If you guys are new to my channel, if you are new to the Ann Crew, the Ann Crew is a place for creative entrepreneurs, aspiring editors, aspiring YouTubers, aspiring filmmakers, and just people like that. If you guys feel like there's nobody around you who thinks like you do, nobody around you who dreams like you do, then the Ann Crew is the place for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy this sort of vlog format. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'll catch you guys on Wednesday. Peace.